Good morning and welcome to St Stephen's. I make it 9.30, so I'm going for it. Um, for those that aren't aware, um, we've had sad news that Thelma has passed away. So I would just like to light a candle for her and say a prayer. So let's pray. Father God, we lift to you Valme and her family at this time. And we just thank you for her service here at this church, for her warm welcome and her smile and her willingness to get stuck in. So Father, today we particularly remember Cheryl as they are mourning as a family. And we just ask that you Surround them with your love and your compassion at this time, that they may know they are not alone. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's carry on our service by saying our opening prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I invite you to stand as we sing our first hymn together. It is in the Green Book number 9. We're going to be singing only verses 1 to three and seven, or else we'll be here for a very long morning. So that's verses one, two, three and seven, and the words will also be on the screen. So please stand.
confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love, with, sorry, and to live in love and peace with all. And we say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. May he heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and may he raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The special prayer for today. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we remain seated for our readings. Our first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, beginning at chapter 50, verse 4. The Sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He awakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. Sovereign Lord has opened my ears, and I have not been rebellious. I have not drawn back. I have offered my back to those who beat me my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting, because the Sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced, therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? <coughs> Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who is he that will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment, and moths will eat them up. And our second reading is taken from James chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. Taming of the tongue. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers and sisters, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself on fire by hell. 
All kinds of animals, birds and reptiles, creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grape tree bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed after three and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him, and when he comes in his Father, when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. And he said to them, I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom come kingdom of God come with power. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we remain standing to sing our next hymn. It's in the Green Book, number 372, or the words will be on the screen. O Jesus, I have promised. <laughs>
please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm curious, how many people here this morning have read the book of James? Oh, yes. oh a few, a few. How many of us know anything about who James was? Mm, I know, I know. <laughs> so I thought, let's find out a bit about James. So I hope you're sitting comfortably. It really isn't going to be that, but it might be. So I'm going to share with you what I found out about the disciple James. He was also known as St. James the Greater. James worked as a fisherman and had a brother called John, and his father was called Zebedee, and they worked on the Sea of Galilee. The mother of James and John, Salome, overstepped her bounds, as mothers do, asking Jesus to grant her son special permission in his kingdom. She wanted one son on the right and one son on the left. Now it seems that James was probably the older of the two brothers because he's always mentioned first. They were followers, James and John, of John the Baptist and later went on to follow Jesus. When Jesus called them, he called them to be fishers of men and they immediately left their family and their business to follow Jesus. Now James the Apostle was honoured and favoured in his position by Jesus as one of the three in Jesus' inner circle. The others were James' brother John and Simon Peter. Three times James, John and Peter were invited by Jesus to witness events that no one else saw. The raising of the daughter of Jairus from the dead, the transfiguration of Jesus, and the agony that he had in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now following the crucifixion of Jesus, James continued to proclaim the gospel, and he made a pilgrimage to the Iberian Peninsula to spread the word of Jesus and when he returned to Judea, not so pleasant, he was beheaded by King Herod Agrippa I in the year 44 AD. And this is detailed in the book of Acts in chapter 12. And it says this, King Herod extended his hands to harm certain ones from the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Seeing that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to arrest Peter also. So James was the first of the apostles to be martyred for his faith. Now the remains of James the Apostle were then transported by his followers to the Iberian Peninsula and are said to be buried in Santiago de Compostela in Spain, which is why he is the patron saint of Spain. Did we know that? No? See, today is a learning day. Now, according to legend, because there is always legend around saints' bodies, his body, along with his followers, sailed to, oh yeah, to the Iberian Peninsula on a rudderless ship with no sail. Landing on the northwest coast of the peninsula, they proceeded up the river Ula to land at Padron. The Celtic queen, Lucia, ruled these lands, and when asked by James's followers if they could bury his body, she refused, and she sent troops to chase after them. Now, while the troops were chasing them over a bridge, it collapsed, and her troops were killed. From that moment, Queen Lucia decided to convert to Christianity, and she then provided them with an ox and a cart so they could transport James's body. Now, they were unsure of where the best place was to put his sacred remains. So they stopped and they prayed. And they decided to let the ox continue until it chose a place to rest. After pausing by a stream, the ox finally came to rest under an oak tree at the top of a hill. And it's here that the cathedral, cathedral of Santiago stands today. 
St. James the Greater is universally regarded as the patron of pilgrims. In Christian art, he had appeared as a pilgrim with a staff, a gourd, and a scallop shell. St. James is also depicted riding a white horse into battle. And there are many Spanish legends of St. James helping Christian armies in fighting against their enemies. The feast day for St. James is July the 25th and is widely celebrated in Spain where they hold firework displays at the end of the two-week celebration. Now as pilgrims started to make their way to the site of St. James's burial, a route developed which became known as the Camino de Santiago or the Way of St. James. Pilgrims were given shelter in monasteries, hospitals and inns along the 500 mile route. The Way of St. James started to be marked by a scallop shell and this was James' symbol because of his original job as a fisherman and because of the miracles that were recorded by pilgrims who touched the shells from the coastline. The grooves in the scallop shell also symbolised the many routes taken by pilgrims that all ended in a single point. So let's turn our attention now back to James in James's book in the Bible. Now we're told that God gave us the gift of language. And when he asked Adam to name the animals in the Garden of Eden, he went for it. Imagine also that first conversation that was had between Adam and Eve. I wonder what they talked about. I wonder what they talked about as they began to get to know one another, one another. Now James writes that all of us make mistakes when speaking. How many of us, even this week, have had a conversation that we walked away from and thought, oh, I wish I hadn't said it in that way. I could have been a bit more thoughtful in how I said that. And I'm sure that's true for all of us this morning, unless you are Jesus incarnate that I haven't noticed this morning. <laughs> and amazingly, we gossip, we lie, we may use unkind words. We are not perfect. And that's why coming on a Sunday morning and asking for forgiveness to reset ourselves for the week ahead is so important. And do you know, on average, we open our mouths to speak 700 times a day. 700 times. That's a lot of opening your mouth, isn't it? Put your foot in it. You're... Yes. And good words lift our spirits, don't they? They encourage us. They inspire us. But the damage that bad words can do can divide, can cause despair. Now, whether we are teachers, and we are all teachers, if we've been parents, we are all teachers. We have to choose our words carefully. As we were talking last week with school reports, if those words from the past still haunt some of us today. And there's that phrase, isn't there? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, that's just not true because wrong words do hurt. And in this culture that we live in, there is so much fake news. So how sometimes do we know what really is true? If we think back to last month with the, the killing, the sad killing of the three girls who had gone to a dance class in Southport, false rumors were placed on social media that said the attack was carried out by a Muslim asylum seeker. And then look how quickly that spread online and the damage that was caused by that. And we saw the results across the country of riots and so many lives were impacted by something that just wasn't true. And we do live in a world where no one is perfect, but we all try. And James makes it clear that we can't always control our tongues. He also writes that the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. 
The tongue is also a fire, a word of evil among the parts of the body. Now we can tame roaring lions and birds of prey, but we can't control sometimes our tongues. Now the Bible says, our speech shows our heart. Our speech shows our heart. And to change our words, we need to change our hearts. So if we dedicate our tongues to the language of God this week, then the right actions will follow. Amen. <coughs> So I invite you to stand as we reaffirm our own faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers and listen to the words of our mouths as we lay before you our hopes and fears, our joys and concerns, and all the things for which we give thanks. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Faithful God, we pray for Christians throughout the world, and particularly for those who are persecuted because of their faith. We ask for your protection for them, and guidance but strength and guidance for all individuals and organisations that seek to help them. We pray for the church both here in North London and throughout the world, and all who call themselves Christians, that they may go forward in unity and strength. Help us to respect the beliefs of others, even if we do not share them, to celebrate what we have in common and to accept our differences. Guide us all in our ministries as we live each day. We ask for your blessing on all our ministry team and the PCC, that you would give all a clear vision of your plans for the future of this parish. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we pray for the nations of the world in these unsettling times, for all peace initiatives and every attempt at negotiation and conflict resolution. We pray for all those affected as a result of war or conflict, the homeless, the hungry, all hostages and refugees. May those who govern be governed by your love. 
May those who lead be led by your directing. May the whole world come to know its need of you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we pray for our local community. We thank you for all people who seek to help others. Please show us how as a church and as individuals we can best serve people who are struggling in any way. In a moment of silence, please pray for any aspect of life in our local community that's on your mind today. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Caring God, we pray for all those who are afflicted by physical, emotional or mental illness. Help them to keep their eyes fixed on you and give them the courage to face the problems affecting their daily lives. In a moment of silence, please pray for anybody who's on your mind today. Comfort and heal all those mentioned, so that they may be aware of your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we remember in your presence all those who have died, and particularly those we have known and loved, especially for remembering Valme. Thank you for her life, faith and service. Lord, we pray that you would wrap your loving arms around Valme's family, and the whole church family, providing them with strength and solace as they grieve. May your presence be felt in their midst, bringing them hope and healing. Help them to find comfort in knowing that Valme is now in your eternal care. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Faithful God, as we leave this place today and return to our homes and loved ones, we ask you to draw near to us, strengthen our faith, deepen our love for you and for our neighbours, and open our eyes to the wonder of your creation. Lord, we thank you that you hear our spoken prayers and those prayers for which we have no words. Help us to listen and watch for your responses, to allow your will to be done in our lives and to play our part in bringing your kingdom into this world. Merciful Father, He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and, and also with you. Please exchange the peace with one another. And we remain standing to sing our offertory hymn where the collection will be taken. It can be found in the Orange Hymn Book, number 37, all the words will be on the screen. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. <coughs> Lord, in your suffering world, this is our prayer. <coughs>
receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. It's 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, not 9.30, so that we can worship together and then go straight into having a bring and share lunch. Now, Helen has done lots of work on this. Um, we have an invitation card for you to invite someone to come with you. 
So if you haven't had a card to take away to invite someone to come with you, they are on the table behind Doris and June at the back. We are asking if you can bring some drink and also a savoury side or a dessert. And Doug and Helen very kindly are going to be providing lots of other bits as well. So thank you. And just to remind us that we are in a world where there are many allergies. So if you're making something to bring, can you make sure that you also fill out an allergen checklist that will be put with your dish so that we can make sure everyone enjoys the meal without being unwell. And also please sign up because Helen and Doug and I need to know who's coming, how many, so that we have enough tables and chairs. And that leads me now to ask what our young people be doing. So, the uh, Sunday School are going to be looking at heroes from the Bible, which fits in. So today they've looked at Noah, and we have this fab action song which talks about all the heroes in the Bible. So I invite you to stand, Robert will push play, and depending on how fit you feel, please join in with the action. <coughs> it's all on screen.
I feel like you need to cheer up for that. <laughs> so now for the blessing. And there is cake this morning. Absolutely. Please eat. <laughs> the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.